it's Liz Thompson again from Sew so With Liz and today I've got another little zipper baggie project to show you. Um, the last video we did, um, we made a little glitzy evening bag with my, what I feel is one of the very, very easiest zippers to uh, put into a bag and uh, the link for that video will be below this one. But today what we're going to do is we're going to insert a zipper into a somewhat unusually shaped bag. Um, I don't, personally don't think that we can ever have enough little zipper baggies to use and I'm using a rather nice sewing print on mine today and it could be for all sorts of little goodies, scissors, needles, um, threads, whatever I might need to take with me to a sewing class or if I'm going somewhere and I want to sit and do some handwork, the perfect little zipper baggie. So, Without any further ado, let's head to the machine and let's see how to make this baggie. So here we are again at the machine and we have a piece of fabric here that has got a rather nice uh, happy uh, sewing print. And what I have done is I have taken a piece of chalk. Well, it's not really chalk, it's more waxy than chalk. And I believe that if you iron this mark, it will come out. So it's kind of like a heat away uh, marking system. And I took my ruler and I made a diagonal mark across my fabric. But before I did that, I got a backing piece of fabric, which just is a quilting cotton. And I had some batting. And the batting happens to be fusible batting. So I didn't need to uh, use uh, safety pins or... Uh, spray glue, nothing like that to adhere the three layers together. So what we're going to do now is I have the machine set up for um, straight stitch and I have lengthened the stitch a little. Um, instead of it being 2.2 or 2.5, what I've done is I have lengthened the stitch to three. Why I like to do that um, with uh, quilting is because you're feeding layers of fabric and if you have a slightly longer stitch it, it generally works better for the actual look uh, and accurate well not accuracy but the look of the stitching now ordinarily i would have um, a walking foot on the machine but this particular machine actually has a built-in walking foot at the back here so I've clicked that down onto the back of the foot. I've had this machine for many, many years, and um, it's a really good mid-range uh, sewing machine. So I am now going to sew down that yellow line that I marked with that uh, yellow marking. It feels a little bit like soap, actually. In fact, if, if you're in a pinch, you can use a sliver of dried soap uh, to mark dark fabrics. Uh, if you have a um, problem with marking a dark fabric. So I have now done a row of stitching there. I've got black in the bobbin as well. Um, I don't mind that being on the inside of my bag. I'm all right with that. But if you are, you could certainly put a color to match your bobbin, your, the, your uh, lining fabric in your bobbin. And away I go on the other diagonal. Now, I could have done just random stitching here. I could have done free motion uh, stippling or some free motion design if I had uh, so wanted. I chose to just do uh, a straight stitch because I didn't want to spend hours here quilting this little sandwich um, while you watched me do that. So here I'm doing it really quickly and to get my second line of diagonal stitching, all I did was use my quilting guide bar, which uh, screws into the back of my foot. And um, I am now riding that quilting guide bar along the previous row of stitching. Now it's black stitching and you may not be able to see it. I can just make it out. So for my next row of stitching, I can ride that quilting guide bar along the stitching that I just did and that's good to go and then we will do one more towards this corner 
and that should be sufficient in this quadrant of my little bag. Okay, one thing this machine does not have is a um, thread cutter, so um, I'm having to remember to cut my threads each time. All right, so once again, I am putting my uh, quilting guide bar along that uh, diagonal line I stitched, and I'm going the other way and just stitching down to create this diagonal grid on my fabric. Okay, and one more. Uh, this way. All right, so we will put that over there and stitch along that line. And actually, I'm wondering if I can just come along here and then stretch. No, going the wrong way. I thought I was going to get tricky there, but nope. It's better to just do it the way I was doing it before. So again, running my quilt guard bar along the previously stitched line and repeating until the entire section of my little bag is done. Now, if you wanted to, you could do this quilting in a completely different color. I would have thought that a red or a blue or a yellow might actually have been quite nice. And then I would have actually seen all my quilting. However, I um, chose not to do that. I chose to do it in black thread because I wanted my quilting to be more a texture and my um, fabric to be the star of the show because this little baggie is going to be a baggie for um, my sewing supplies when I'm going somewhere and want to take little bits and bobs with me to do some hand sewing or um, maybe I'm taking my machine with me but I want to keep some little things like feet and accessories in a little baggie. Right, so I do believe, there we are, um, I have got the uh, bag quilted. I'm not going to worry too much about all these threads at this point because those will probably be trimmed off the edge with my rotary cutter in due course. So, the next thing we're going to do is that trimming. And so, let me just move my machine a little bit away so that I've got some space here on my board to cut with my rotary cutter. And um, I am going to take my ruler and cut along this edge here. Okay, I've got another rotary cutting board on top of that one, so that's why I didn't want to cut right through. And then I am going to cut along this edge and this, the rest of the way. And you could measure this if you wanted to, but I'm just eyeballing it and putting my ruler against my cut edge and lining it up so that I have got my edges all squared off and that's why I didn't need to worry about those threads because all those straggling threads and my batting is only coming to about there so I'm actually going to cut it a little bit shorter and cut off more fabric there right so our little bag is going to be folded over like that and we're going to put a zipper along the top. And then we're going to sew our side seams. So the first thing we're going to do is put the zipper in along the top. Now, one of the, I'm going to move my sewing machine back. And just check that you can see everything on my screen. I don't need my quilting guide bar anymore. So just in case it gets in the way for me, I'm taking it off. And I have a lovely, long, bright yellow zipper. Now, I like to use zippers that are much longer than what I need. And the reason for that is that if you are trying to work with a zipper that's a bit small, trust me, you're going to get frustrated. So I always buy longer zippers than I need. I do not need to use a zipper foot. I'm just continuing to use my regular sewing foot and my walking, my built-in walking foot. 
and you will notice that I have put this zipper face down onto my fabric. That's the lining of my fabric, this is the right side of my fabric, and that is the right side of my zipper. So if I look at my zipper now, it is wrong side facing up. And I do need to do something with my needle because I want to make sure that I'm stitching where I want to be. So I'm going to just check if, no, you see, what I want to do is go to a stitch where I can move my needle position. And I think what I'm going to do is put my needle position there. And I'm going to use my needle up down as well. All right, so that the needle stops in the fabric when I stop sewing. And I'm going to ride the edge of my foot, the right hand edge of my foot against the zipper. And while I'm doing that, make sure that my zipper is flush with the edge of the fabric that I've just trimmed. And if you want to pin, you certainly can do so. So if I grab a pin here, I would recommend that you pin horizontally like that. Don't pin this way because it often distorts the zipper. I'm not going to use pins because I've done probably a thousand of these bags and I don't need a pin. But if you feel you need one, that's fine. You can put a couple in across there. And so what I'm going to do now is sew all the way along with a straight stitch. And uh, the length of the stitch is 2.5, which is kind of the normal length of the stitch. And you can see that I'm sewing all the way to the edge of the fabric. You can do a little back stitch if you wish. And then I'm going to take my scissors and trim off my threads. So in a sense, I have sewn my zipper down and now I'm going to flip the zipper over and what I really need to do is then fold back the fabric that I've sewn the zipper onto so that the only thing that I have here is my um, zipper. My fabric is folded over completely like that. And I think before we do anything else, I will trim that little thread off the end. All right, and now what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch the fabric onto the, the uh, where, where we kind of stitched it to stitch the zipper on. So I like to make sure that this fabric, fabric is nice and flat and that it's all facing to the left. I've got no fabric peeping and creeping up to the right. And once again, I follow the edge of um, the foot with the teeth, the nylon teeth on this zipper. I prefer to use nylon teeth, um, but you certainly could use a metal zipper. It just means you have to take extra care when it comes to the parts where you sew over the zipper. And quite frankly, I don't like doing that. I think that's kind of living dangerously. So I tend to use nylon zippers. And you can see that my zipper was far too long for this project. Well, number one, I didn't have a shorter yellow zipper. I could have made do with a zipper that was about that long. Um, but I very, very rarely ever buy zippers less than about 12 inches long for this very reason. Okay, so there we have our zipper sewed in and top stitched. And it's all nice and neat on the back as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold the bag right sides together and lay that zipper up against the other top edge of the bag and make sure that our sides are matching. All right, they're not 100% matching, but that's okay, we can trim them later. And now, once again, I am going to go and do exactly what I did a few moments ago, is I am going to sew uh, with the edge of the foot against the zipper and I am going to sew that zipper down to the bag. Once again, I'm checking that my zipper is along the trimmed edge of my bag and that it is lined up nicely. And I can do a little back stitch and trim my threads. All right. Now, I think you will understand why I like to have my zippers so long. 
because the next job you have to do is top stitch that other side of the zipper. Can you see how difficult that's going to be if you're trying to do it inside this tube of the bag? You're going to want to swear or say those nice sewing words that I sometimes talk about. Of course, I never say those sewing words. Nobody's ever heard me say them. Okay. And so now, do you see that when I open the zipper out on a nice long zipper, I'm dealing with nice flat fabric here, which is exactly the same as how easy it was the first time I top stitched. So once again, here we go. I ride the right hand side of the foot along the teeth of the zipper and I make sure that everything is curled under and uh, facing towards the right side. Why is this not sewing now? Let's just... Okay, there we go. The other thing you can do is you can take this to your ironing board and you can press this with your iron. Some people say you have to be very careful and you can hear it sort of chomping and chunking a bit. And that's because I actually have a top stitch needle in the machine from a previous project. And um, I'd only used it for a little bit of sewing, so I left it in there. So it's quite a big, thick needle that's having to get through, what's it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of fabric. Three from the quilt, three from the, the little seam allowance, and one for the zipper. So that's quite, it's asking the machine to do quite a bit. And which is why it's not liking to go in, but once it gets going, it's going. All right. And we can reverse a little. And now my other side is top stitched. As I say, you can certainly take it to the ironing board and press it if that makes sense to you. Um, I just have it set up here with my cutting mat rather than my ironing uh, mat. So I'm not choosing to iron. Right. So now I have my bag and it has been sewn with the zipper both sides and top stitched. So now what I do, oops, more threads to trim off. Um, a great one on trimming as I go because some, if you don't do that, you're going to get caught up with your threads at some point. So now what I do is I close the zipper. It doesn't have to be closed all the way, but it does need to be closed at least half, two thirds of the way. And I'm now going to sew the side seam of my bag. And let me just remove some of those threads again. I am just going to do a straight stitch and I probably should have changed the needle so that it is a thinner needle and therefore can pierce through the layers of the fabric a little easier but once it gets going it's good and you can hear do you hear that sound that's because I'm asking it to go through quite a few layers of thread with a thicker needle than I would normally use for this kind of a project. Now, do you notice that I'm coming nearly to the top of the zipper? I have it folded over in half, literally like that, and I am going to go through those nylon teeth of the zipper. We do not need to worry. It's very unusual that I break a needle going through nylon teeth. Yes, if this was a, a zipper with metal teeth, a huh? different story. But here I go, and I keep going right to the end. And then I'm going to reverse a little to go back and raise my presser foot and cut my threads off. Now, I have got a seam here. Oopsie. I think we ran out of bobbin thread. Can you believe it? No, we did not. So let's bring my bobbin thread up. There we go. And let's give it another whirl. Okay, so there we go. And all the way to the top and reverse a little and there we have it done. Now, I have not neatened the seam. If I had a serger, at this point I could very 
easily go to my serger and just zoom down there and neaten that whole seam. But I don't have my serger set up right here now. So you will notice that I have just cut off the end of my zipper. And I will do a video at some stage showing you what I do with, in fact, we'll do it in this video. What I do with all these, what I call zipper leftovers. I give it a good yank and then that little metal uh, clasp on the end of the zipper, stopper, metal stopper is off. And I now have lovely tape to use in my projects. In fact, I don't throw away any of those little bits. I keep them all. And I have a zip seal bag with a whole variety of different colors of zippers that I've cut off. And we would use one of those in this project. But I do need to neaten the seam. Otherwise, I've got raw edges inside my bag. So I am going to switch to a zigzag stitch. And I'm going to do a little zigzag stitch all the way down that seam. And then just do a little reverse and we are done it's not terribly terribly neat if you were doing a fully lined bag and then you were turning your bag out through a hole in your lining at the bottom of the bag you wouldn't see any of these seams but we're just do, the, the class today is mainly to show you how easy it is to make a little zipper baggie there's no need to be afraid of zippers and so I'm not worrying too much about seeing visible seams inside the bag. All right, so let's go back to a straight stitch to do our seam. And back again, and all the way down the side. Whoa, oh, I made a mistake. I'm on a roll sewing up my seams, and I forgot that I'm showing you a very different and special bag. So... What we're going to do here, instead of sewing up that other side seam, just like that, like I showed, started doing a moment ago, is we're going to do it differently. We are going to fold this bag over. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get a pin. And I want to put that in exactly the halfway position. All right, so there is my pin. And that's quite important to see that, where that middle position is, because I'm going to bring the zipper up there and it needs to come up only to that middle position. And I'm then going to put a zipper, sorry, a pin right there to hold that side of the bag. Then I'm going to bring the other side of the bag up and get another pin. So yes, I do sometimes use pins because I only have two hands. If I had octopus uh, hands and I had more than two maybe I would need some pins lots of the time I don't use them but today I do then I want to show you what you do with this piece of zipper that I pulled off what we're going to do is we're going to fold it into a little loop and then we are going to put it right in the middle in fact, what I'm going to do is undo one of those pins because it'll be easier for me to do this. And I am going to put it right in the middle of the bag between the two ends of the zipper and put a pin in to hold it in place. So do you see there part of my zipper is coming over the, that uh, tape, zipper tape, so that it is really right in the middle of the zipper. And we will... Oh, that pin will need to get thrown out. It's blunt on the end and did not want to go through my fabric. This one's a little blunt too. Goes to show you shouldn't be buying cheap pins. They don't work. All right, so now I'm ready to sew that other side seam. And this is where it's also extremely important to leave your zipper open. Because we're sewing the other opening, the side seam or the, yeah, the side seam closed. And if you don't have the zipper open, you're going to be in trouble. So, again we go, riding the foot along the edge of the fabric. Now remember, I've got three pins over here. So we do need to go with some caution. Some people will tell you they never sew over pins. I've taken that one out. 
I do, but sometimes I do get myself into hot water because I will break a needle going over those pins. But so far, so good. Okay, and I'm going to take that pin holding that uh, zipper tape or zipper left over in the middle and the other one out. All right, so there we go. And then I am going to put my reverse on and go back over all those layers and then forward over all those layers and continue on to the end of my bag. And then take it out of the machine and trim my threads. Next thing is I'm going to trim off and I think I'm going to get a bigger pair of scissors. And I am going to trim all those bits of zipper off. Right? All of it off. And that can go in my little uh, bag of things. I don't throw that in the garbage. It goes in a big bag and I make little pillows when I have a big enough uh, enough stuffing for the pillow. And all the stuffing is is scraps of fabric, scraps of all sorts of things. And then I make up a pillow and give it to a friend of mine and they give them to uh, various charities as pillows, largely pillows for the homeless people. All right, now we need also to do a zigzag here to end our seam off, to neaten it. Whoopsie, put my foot back on the machine. And take my thread to the back, change my machine to zigzag, and away we go. Again, I've got lots of layers there in the middle, so I'm proceeding with caution. And then do a little bit of a back stitch over here, and there we are. I do believe that our baggie is done. So what we're going to do is turn the baggie out. And I like to use, and I'm trying to see where there's one close by. I don't think I have one close by, but that's okay. Um, I like to use a chopstick. I found those very helpful for putting the little never use a pair of scissors. Uh, and ask me how I know you should not use a pair of scissors to poke out your corners. Because you will go through the corner like I have done. And then it's really a pain because you've got quite a fix up job to do. All right, so there is my little bag, and if I close the zipper, look at that. Is that not sweet? I think that's really nice, and look, it's quite spacious inside. So I could get a whole lot of little bits and bobs. I could even get those scissors in, could I? Yes, I can get those scissors in. Um, I could get all sorts of little bits and bobs into my bag, ready to go with me and uh, wherever I want to be with my sewing. So that is our um, second little zipper baggie. I like to call it a humbug bag. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of a candy called a humbug. Um, when I was a very little girl growing up in South Africa, um, both sets of my grandparents were Scottish and had gone to South Africa after the First World War. They immigrated there. And my mom and my dad both had Scottish families. And um, so there was quite a British and Scottish influence in my upbringing. And um, my dad used to buy us humbug candies, which was a candy shaped exactly like this bag, only a lot smaller. Um, I wish the candies had been this big. And uh, when we were good, my dad would over came in a big tin, and I think it was called Old Fashioned Mint Humbugs. And it was like a toffee, a mint-flavored toffee with an outside, uh, hard surface on the outside. And then you sucked that and then crunched on the mint-flavored toffee inside. And we loved those. We used to get them with, as treats from our dad. So I've known about mint, mint humbugs for a very long time. And when I saw this bag years ago, somebody showed me how to make it. And I just thought it was lovely because it reminded me as well of my childhood and my British ancestry or Scottish ancestry. Okay, so that is our little baggie today. I hope you um, learned something. I hope you uh, found this video interesting and that you will be able to put it to use to make baggies um, for all sorts of things. And um, I have made many, many of these, probably hundreds of them. And I have put 
um, a hand lotion and a soap into one and given that to somebody as a gift. Great hostess gifts, great stocking stuffers, um, actually great all round. And so there you are. That is our humbug bag, little zipper bag. And I think you will agree with me that it really wasn't that hard to sew a zipper into a baggie. I will be back with more videos on sewing other little uh, zipper baggies because there's all sorts of different baggies that you can make. Um, you can make them in the hoop of the embroidery machine and you can do uh, lined baggies so that you don't see the raw edges of your seams inside. So we've got lots in store. Um, once again, my name is Liz Thompson and I am from, am from Sew With Liz. I have a website called sewwithliz.com. I have an Instagram page, a Facebook page, a Facebook group called Sew and Learn with Liz. Um, and that's for ongoing support. So if you saw something in the video today that maybe didn't make sense to you and you'd like to ask me a question, you are very welcome to go to my Facebook group. It's an open group. You do not have to answer 20 questions to join. And I will be happy to monitor those questions and get back to you. Um, obviously, you can also ask questions on this YouTube channel. And you can certainly post a question there. And all the links to all those uh, social media pages will be below this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you again soon. Mm -hmm.